Hi, I'm Aaron, and thank you so much for joining us on today's webinar. I am the founder of Streamtime. We've been around for 14 years. I can't believe it's been that long. But a year ago, we did something absolutely radical and crazy. We, we took our product and decided we're going to rebuild it from scratch. We felt like the platform that we were based on way back then was just out of date. But not just that, we felt the industry had moved on considerably. So we partnered with Sydney-based agency startup for the people, an amazing team of bright sparks and brain boxes and creative thinkers. And they went out there and talked to the industry, talked to our clients, talked to prospective clients, talked to people that used other types of project management software and tried to find what all the pain points were and then start to address them. I actually video blogged the entire process. You'll find that on our Vimeo page. But we have had a stack of amazing reviews on the internet about our product since we launched. Go and check out these reviews. They are awesome. We're excited about what we do. And I'm a very excitable person, but I'm going to pass you over to Ryan, who's going to go through the product with you in a much more calm, controlled manner. And Ryan's going to show you how to solve some pain points in your business. Namely, how do I get a job plan together quickly and easily without double entering information? How do I send a quote from my job plan with one click? Can this be true? How do I get my team to track time without feeling like they are monkeys doing timesheets? And how do I know how my business is performing in real time? All of these questions will be answered. But now I'm going to pass you across to Ryan. Thank you very much, Aaron, for that lovely introduction. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do today is, yeah, take you through the system and show you a few things. So I want to start us off in this job list view. Uh, I've gone through and created a few jobs for us already so to, so we can try and get the feel of things. Uh, and we're also going to actually show you how to create a job as well as we go through. So this is our whip list. This is where we're going to be coming in to see what we've got on, uh, what what is active within this list. Uh, and we've just got sort of a couple of columns that are already pre-populated in here. However, to enhance sort of visibility in here and to make things a lot sort of more efficient as well, we do have uh, an option to show a whole range of columns here. So if you're not really uh, a money person, then we can change this to say hours used versus hours planned instead, uh, or we can have a job number, a contact. So we actually have a lot of flexibility within this screen which comes in um, handy as well. Um, we also have a, a range of segments and filters here. So you can actually filter out what is in this list. So you can really focus on what you need to see at any one point. So at the moment, as I mentioned before, we're looking at active jobs. But if we maybe wanted to see a, a particular contact or a particular client, uh, for example, if we wanted to just sort of see Apple's jobs, then we can do that. Uh, we can also see, oh, I want to see anything completed or anything archived as well. Then we could also filter that out as well. So these are all of my archived Apple jobs. And then if I really wanted to, I can actually create this and save this as a segment. So what that will do is we'll, it will just allow me to come into the segments at any time. And as we can see, we've already got a couple here and come in and just click these at any time. And it's going to show me exactly what I've saved. So in this case, I actually came in here and saved a couple of columns. I saved a particular job number because I wanted just to be seeing that say project. Uh, and then I can just see the hours used and then sort of a budgeted variance as well and when it's due. So this is a quick on snapshot of how my Apple uh, work is going at this stage. So to create a new job, we just need to come up to the top section here where the create new job button is. Uh, and this here is where we're going to be putting in our job details. So to give this job a name, we might just go Streamtime Rebrand. Uh, we can pick a client. So this is the list of all of your clients within the client's area of Streamtime. If your client doesn't exist, then you can actually type in, um, we might just call it Sunbeam. So we know that that doesn't actually exist in there. So we can actually create that client. Or, of course, if it does exist, you can start typing it in and it will start to uh, bring through the, the ones that are relevant. So create, create or picking a contact as well. So I might pick Danielle in this case. And then we do have a job number as an area in here as well. So you can format and add in whatever job number here. So it's kind of a free text field. So you can really yeah put in whatever reference number that you really want to put in there. And it will remember the next number 
for the next time that you create a job as well. We also got two financial structures, which is cost by team member and also cost by item. Uh, one is, of course, when it's the fees are charged by the hourly rate per person and the other one is by item. So if your main focus is just by the item, it doesn't really matter who's working on it, then you can do that. Uh, and then, of course, a budgeted figure. So you might just put in, I'll put in $10,000 for this, this stage. Uh, and then just save and plan and that will take you directly to the job. So we can see here our title, our contacts, what sort of basic financial information is at the top there. Uh, and at the moment, we've got a budget of $10,000. Uh, nothing's invoiced, of course, expenses uh, and so on. So down here is where we're actually going to be creating our plan as well as our quote. So this is a done in one sort of scenario here. We want to be able to create your job plan, type in the descriptions, put in our hourly rates, our hourly figures, uh, get together how much we're going to be needing for this job. And then we're just going to turn that straight into a quote. So to create it, it is just a, a new item. Uh, again, we can pick some, some stuff here. We might just do some design work and then add in a description. Uh, these items here, uh, they actually live in your items and expense area inside of your settings. So all, all of the guys are here. Uh, the description will actually filter through into your job as well. And you can populate this as you go, uh, just yeah, willy-nilly, or set a few in there to start with uh, so you have sort of a quick access list there already. So jumping back into our job, we can then go through and start adding all the items to the job. Uh, we don't necessarily have to start have a start and end date just yet. Uh, this is at a planning stage at the moment, but we are going to put in some team members. So I'm going to maybe put 10 hours worth for Alan. Uh, we'll put five hours worth for me. So yeah, it is a case of just going through and then uh, selecting what needs to be done. And we also have an expenses area down here as well. Yeah, anything that's going to be a third party expense, you can add this to the job as well. So I might get some photography work. Two hours worth, it's going to cost us $50 and we'll charge out $200. So yeah, that's building our job plan. Uh, and then after you're planned it out, then it's just a case of then creating the quote. Uh, while we're on the quote, you can have a couple of options down the right-hand side. We can hide the quantity. So if you don't necessarily want to show the client the, the hourly figures, uh, you can hide the team on the job, but I quite think that's a nice little feature just to show your client who's working on it. You can move these around. Uh, which is really easy and you can also change the description on it as well or even the item name. So if you have something different that you want to show the client, then you can change that. Uh, we have an area for your terms and conditions down the bottom as well and then of course we can add tax if you wanted to show the tax or even an intro as well. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can sort of manipulate and show on here. Once the quote is set, then you can send it straight to your client from this view. Uh, if you go to your send quote button there, uh, you can then send it to the contact or you can add in anyone else that you wanted to send it. This is what I will get as a client. Uh, once I'm happy with it, I can view it, I can accept and decline that online, then you will receive an email and it will also actually change your budgeted figure to the quoted amount. So if you've sent multiple quotes and three or four of them have been accepted, then they'll all add together and actually end up as your budget as well. So now that we've got the job set, we've sent out the quote and it's all been approved, then we can start to kick things off and send it to our users to actually begin the work. Now what we can do is just hit play against all the items that need to be started and then as the user they will then get a notification and it will then start to appear in their scheduled area on their to-dos. So the to-do area is where yeah, your users will live day to day and this is also where they will be able to track their time. So this is my to-do list. This is all the work that I've been given so far and I've planned out my week accordingly. Now the notification here will tell me that I've been given 10 hours for copywriting, been given five hours for some design, which I can very easily just add in an hour for the day if I wanted to, or I can always come over here and actually assign some hours out for the days that I need or that I can work on it. So today's looking pretty busy. 
So I'm going to put some copywriting on there for tomorrow. And then I might put on some design and actually stretch that out to two hours. So this is just what I think I might have time to do in the coming days. When I start a task, I can click into it and see what needs to be done. I can then actually write a bit of a description of what I was doing uh, per item or per task. Once I've finished, I can change the amount here, the to-do hours on how long it actually took. So I may have only taken an hour there. I can save that and then drag that all the way down to done to track my time. This is where your users will be organizing themselves, uh, making sure they have plenty of time to do things. And we also have sort of a hold alt option here, which you can duplicate it as well. So when you're duplicating it, it takes off the remaining time as well. So you can not go over it. Uh, and when things are due on today, you'll get a little black flag there. And when they're overdue, it'll sort of go red as well. So it's a quite a good indicator of where things are sitting. Once you've actually done your items, you can actually tick them off down the side here. What that will do is actually make the item inside the job done. And after all the items are done on your job, in your list of jobs, you will actually then see the completed status appear. So it'll say, yeah, all of the items are done, so the job's complete. Thanks, Ryan. I'm going to cut in on your dance, or is that dance, and quickly show you guys scheduling because it's a new feature, so we've had to insert it into this demo for you. And this feature is only available with our premium price plan, and it allows you to look at team capacity, uh, staff availability, and it has a Gantt drag and drop style setup. So you can see here, for example, if I open up uh, Danielle's jobs, I can see tasks that she's working on, and I can up here see that um, what her capacity is like. So for instance, she's got three hours 30 capacity for tomorrow. And if I want to schedule something in for her then, I can simply click into the area that I want her to work on. And um, I can drag my mouse up until I make that full assignment for her. In this case, she's going to do some backend development. Now for the rest of the week, I might want her working on project management. So I can just drag across, then drag up, and I can make that assignment for her. So you'll see that I've allocated 22 hours. That leaves a free time of six hours. Now, if you come back to the jobs tab here, I was looking at this, the team tab. So there's my team members and all of their availability. If you look at the jobs tab, you can see sorted by job, all of my team members. We're looking at one to three weeks because my browser window is expanded far enough to show three weeks. Uh, and I can see the remainder of this week. We're calculating availability for each of these people based on the amount of hours that they're working that have been set up in their preferences. And that shows how many hours free they have to work on other work. So once again, you can open these things out and you can see exactly what's happening. So this schedule is reflective of the jobs items and the team members and what they've been assigned and when they're assigned to do it. For each of these items, you can pause or play or complete them. And the idea behind having the play and the pause in here is that you can set an entire job up and just have it in the pause state. So this one here, for example, has uh, two items. Both of them have been paused. One's for Alan, one's for the boss. And it's got an admin item with no team members assigned. So the idea being that when the go button is hit on this job, you can assign out what you want to do with these team members. And you can see as I'm doing that, I'm hitting a capacity problem here with Alan and that's because he's obviously booked out on those days. So I can, I can assign things like this until I hit maximum capacity for Alan that I'm kind of getting the most from him to complete this particular item. It's showing me how many hours that I'm assigning out here. And if the item on the job, if I go back to the job here and take a look at the item, uh, has some hours allocated to it, uh, for instance here, I'll just allocate 20 hours on this one for example. The magnifying glass takes me back to where I was. You can see that there's the 20 hours that set up on the job. Here's 16 hours made up of the 9 plus the 7 that I have assigned for Alan. Now this is 
in the yellow pause state, which means Alan can't see this just yet on his to-do list because we have not set the job into play. It allows me to schedule the job, see what the capacity is like, and then when I'm ready to hit the go button, I just hit the play over here. And at that point, Alan's going to see this, these two assignments, these two separate assignments over on his to-do screen. So easiest way to get there, a couple of ways. One is to come and look over here and you can see there's a, there's a jump off point and that's taking me into Alan's to-do list. Now, he's done nothing this week. Uh, maybe he's been away. And he's got nothing assigned for today, as you recall on the schedule. The next assignment is actually the wireframe job on the 17th, which is this Monday. And the idea is that once a scheduler sets that schedule, the most important work always comes to the top of the pile over here on the schedule. And the individuals can then plan their week. There's a couple of ways that they can do it. There is a button that they will have, and because I'm viewing Alan's screen, I don't see that button, but if I just jump into Mo, who I'm logged in as, I can see it, and that button says plan your week. What that does is it looks at the work that's been scheduled, and it fits the to-dos across the week based on the priority order that is set over here. It also honors the schedule and whatever the scheduler has as the first order of priority. So in Alan's case, if he were to auto schedule this week for himself, nothing would happen because there is nothing due for today. So Alan has a choice as often happens to work on this a little earlier. Should he want to, he just needs to pick it up, drag it out and he can see and assign exactly what he did do, what he plans to do for the day. And uh, once he's completed that, he just drags and drops it down into the done pile, which as we know, tracks the time on that work. Now, I'm not logged in as Alan, so as you can tell, I can flip between different users' screens here and I can kind of get down to a control freak micromanagement level if I really want to, and I can add people's to-do cards right down onto their screens. We we really don't recommend this, but I know that there are many of you that love that level of control, so that's why we've allowed it. But of course our recommendation is to stick to the schedule where you have a big overview of the, the team view with all of their capacities. You can drill down to individual items. You can start and stop items as you need to. Um, and you can see things based on job as well. And you can see how a job is tracking in that way. If you visit help.streamtime.net and type in scheduling, you'll see a bit more information about this. And there is a 11 minute video that goes into great detail. And if you're interested in how this works, you should uh, take a look at that. But right now we're going back to Ryan and he's going to take us into the analytics section. I have this analytics area as well. So this is going to show you all the time, all the expenses in the entire system. At the moment, we're looking at my time this week and we have a very similar sort of segments and filters view here as we did in the job screen or the jobs list uh, with some save segments in here as well. So if you wanted to focus on what your team has done this week, then we have a pre-save segment here, which you can actually click on and just see how much time people have done this month. You can of course refine this like we did inside the jobs list as well. So if you wanted to be really specific on the client, uh, a particular status, then you can do so as well. So the visibility flexibility in here is amazing. This is custom reporting uh, right at your fingertips as well. So some really cool stuff here and you can of course export this data out into a CSV file. Uh, you can drill down into this further as well if you needed to, to see what our item expense was, the job, the client, a little bit more information and the, the totals. Uh, again, this all gets exported out if you wanted to, but you can pretty much show whatever you want on this screen. So it's all here. The only thing we need to do now after yeah, tracking your time, uh, seeing what you've got on, organizing your own week is of course to invoice the client. So if we go back to our job that we've been working on the Streamtime rebrand, Come back into active jobs, type in our job name, which is right there. We need to invoice the client. So we have the invoices tab here, which actually links straight up with zero. Uh, all you need to do is connect it. It is just a simple click on act the link, which will be in here if you haven't synced it with it already. Sign in and then hit authorize. So it's quite simple. Uh, and then we have sort of two choices to invoice the job. We can invoice the job plan, which yeah, matches exactly what is in here, the descriptions and everything like that. Uh, or we can actually invoice via the time and expenses. So yeah, if you're invoicing your client via how much time it actually took, then you can. Uh, and it's just a case of clicking on it and then hitting invoice the, the $9,000 or so. Uh, it will then generate the invoice in, in zero. Uh, and you can view some sort of figures here. So where it's sitting, when it's due, the invoice number. 
uh, and then you can view it at any time from this section as well. And then from zero, you can actually do all your full finance reporting and send out all of your invoices from there too. So potentially if you have reoccurring payments or something like that, you can actually do that in there. So at any time, if any of you need any assistance or any help with us, uh, we have a, a nice easy sort of help button down the bottom left-hand corner here. Click on that at any time. Feel free to have a chat to us. We're around. Uh, you don't really have to leave the app here. or You can always email us as well at help at streamtime.net if you prefer. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time. See you later.